Now I've had a ton of messages and comments asking me to make this video, so not wanting to disappoint, here it is. I'm going to take you through how much it costs to buy and run one of these, a JDM mini truck. The plan is to cover everything, from purchasing one all the way down to the nitty gritty stuff like how much a spark plug is. So, if you're looking to buy one of these, or you might already have one and you just want to see how my figures line up with yours, then go grab yourself a cuppa, get sat down, and let's get into it. A lot of people want to know how much it costs to own one of these things, and it's either because you might be thinking of getting one for yourself, or you're just nosy. Either way, this video should answer all of your questions, but if it doesn't, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Before we get into it, I wouldn't normally ask, but if you're not subscribed already, then make sure you tap that button if you find this video useful. Because a massive 98% of people who watched the last video on the Acti weren't subscribed. That's a lot of people. Plus, with the new partner we have on the channel, My Car Cleaning, if you do subscribe and leave a comment on any video uploaded this month, you'll automatically be entered into the free giveaway. It genuinely is the best way to support small creators like myself, and it'd be very much appreciated. So if you want to win a bottle of Carbon Collective Lusso Shampoo and a Sam's Detailing Drying Towel, remember to comment down below and subscribe to the channel. No dramas if you don't win the giveaway, you can always use the discount code LUCKSHIP10 to get 10% off over 2,000 different detailing products on My Car Cleaning's website to keep your motor looking fresh. So make sure you go check those guys out. Right, now I've stopped begging, let's crack on. So yeah, if you're new around here, this is my Honda Acti SDX, and in my personal opinion, it's the mini truck to go for, hence why I bought it. A lot of people prefer the styling of the Suzuki Carry, which is fair enough. They do look cute with the little rounded headlights, but the engine in the Acti is positioned towards the rear axle, rather than under the driver's seat. It might make it a little bit harder to work on, but at least my ass isn't medium rare every time I go for a drive. I'll make a separate video on the differences between these two trucks if this video ever hits 1000 likes, so go on, give it a click. Whatever your preference is, they're all roughly about the same price. If you're looking to buy one here in the UK, a mint low mileage standard truck will cost you on average about £5,000. If you're wanting a modified one, then you can expect to double that. You can pick up cheaper ones, but I think the majority of people would like one as close to showroom condition as possible, so that's what you can expect to pay. Now that figure is with it landed and registered here in the UK, which is how I bought my truck, and I'll stick a link to the collection video at Ignition Imports in the description if you want to go check that out. You can go down the route of importing one yourself if you're that keen to get hold of one directly from Japan. Let's say you manage to buy one at auction for £2,500. Shipping is about £800 to £1,000. There will be tax and duty to pay on top of the hammer price, which is about 30% of the vehicle cost plus your shipping. And you've also got your export fees that are anywhere from £750 to £1,500, unless it's specifically included in the vehicle cost, which some auctions do. Obviously, all of the costs relative to shipping depend on where you are in the world. Looking at how much they sell for over in Japan nowadays, you're probably only going to be a couple of hundred quid better off if you do all of this yourself, which for some people is worth it, I guess. But if you're like me and want to avoid the stress of doing it all yourself, then buying one that's already imported into the country might be the best way for you. Once you've got older one of them then, what is it going to cost you to run it? Let's start with the must-pays that we have here in the UK, insurance, road tax and MOT. Well, insurance totally depends on the person who's getting the quote, but for me it was around £400 for the year, which is average I'd say. That's with zero no claims bonus because this is my second car, but I do have a totally clean licence. Road tax. There's no getting out of it unfortunately, and it's going to set you back £180 for the year, which is £30 more expensive than my previous car, a 415 brake horsepower 3 litre M140i. Work that one out. And the final thing that you need to do is put it through its MOT. Richard at Ignition Imports was kind enough to do this for me, so I didn't have to spend a penny. But if it hasn't already been done, you will need to fit a rear fog light, as that's a requirement here in the UK, annoyingly. And you can't have the amber side lights either, hence why these little guys have been drilled into the existing amber lenses. All of that work, including parts and the price of an MOT, shouldn't set you back more than £150. And it will be a lot cheaper if you can fabricate your own brackets and wire the lights in yourself. On to fuel. Now, I have the option of flicking it into four-wheel drive if I want to, but I usually just mooch about with it sending the power to the rear wheels, you know, for skids. 
on private land of course, officer. With it being in two wheel drive most of the time it's a little bit lighter on petrol and I've been averaging about 30 miles per gallon which isn't too bad considering it sat at 60 mile an hour most of the time I take it out. Now this truck came with an abundance of service history. Unfortunately for me though I'm not fluent in shapes so I can't read any of it. Because of this then I decided to just play it safe and stock up on parts. And personally I use a company called YokohamaMotors.com to get genuine parts sent over from the land of the rising sun. They have literally everything that you need including refurbished parts if your budget can't stretch to brand new. And this isn't a sponsored video in any way shape or form, it's a genuine recommendation from a place that I've used in the past. I've trekked the Acti to what is essentially a full service kit if you like. Filters, spark plugs, a water pump, a timing belt and tensioner bearings and the parts themselves aren't horrifically overpriced but you do get stung a little bit by the shipping. Don't get me wrong there's almost definitely cheaper units out there that'll probably work and fit from other vehicles but if you're wanting to keep things simple and use genuine parts that you know are fit for purpose then that's how I go about things. Some parts are expensive though, there's just no getting around it. Even though there isn't a whole lot that can go wrong on these trucks, things like dampers and carburetors do cost quite a lot to replace if they fail beyond repair. Finally, I want to talk about OEM upgrades and modified parts because if you're like me, you won't have it stay in stock for long. There aren't too many upgrades from factory as far as I'm aware, but finishing touches like this OEM digital clock is, well, silly money really. Same goes for any modified part you might be after too. You really do have to pay a premium to get hold of aftermarket bumpers and other bodywork, and if you thought shipping an oil filter across the world was expensive, well, try sending a front bumper. I suppose that's the upside to importing your own vehicle. If you're organised enough and have boots on the ground over in Japan, you can always stockpile a load of parts over there, jam them into the cab of the truck and then send them over in a wanna. Now unless you're wanting a set of rare JDM wheels, you don't have to spend a lot to change the shoes on your truck. I picked up these BBS miles on eBay for about £120. They needed a refurb and I mean they aren't perfect now if you look super close, but when you take into account it cost me about £400 to get this set up, it's an absolute steal. I have made a separate video on my wheel specs for all three sets that I run so I'll link the video down in the description too if you want to see what fits, but the truck has a fairly common PCD so there's more options out there than you think. To summarise then you'll find that the initial cost of the truck isn't too bad. I'm sure as they get older and less of them come through the auctions you'll have to start paying a premium for them, but currently the market's quite stable. They aren't overly expensive to run but maintenance items can be a little bit pricey and if anything does break and you can't repair it then that's when it does start to get really expensive, but that's mainly because parts aren't readily available here in the UK. Aftermarket parts and other modifications can vary in price massively, from finding your own cheap wheel setup like I have, to an air ride system that'll cost you nearly the same amount as the truck. It all depends on how much you want to spend on it at the end of the day, and that's why they're aftermarket. You don't have to fit any if you don't want to. That's it for now though. Like I said at the start, if you haven't already, go give that subscribe button a tap on your way out, and if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Remember, if you do that, you'll be entered into the monthly giveaway too, so it's a no-brainer really, isn't it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Mm.